Imagine this. There's a whole bunch of woolly mammoth, and then they go extinct, and everyone says, that's it. We'll never see them again. But then years later, somebody finds one in a different area, and they decide that they can reintroduce it into its natural habitat, and it works. Well, that's exactly what's happening here in Gardnerville at this fish hatchery. I'm here today to talk to Lisa about the Lahontan cutthroat trout. They're reintroducing this into Pyramid Lake and other areas nearby. This is exciting stuff. The program to introduce the Lahontan cutthroat trout, or LCT, to Pyramid Lake has been the focus here at the Lahontan National Fish Hatchery for the past 20 years. Hi, Lisa. Hey, John. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Boy, there's a lot going on here. There is. There is. It's pretty exciting. Lisa Hakey has been working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the past 24 years. What's, what's happening exactly here with all this action? Well, here at Lahontan National Fish Hatchery, we have a captive broodstock for the native strain of Lahontan cutthroat trout that used to exist and spawn in Pyramid in Lake Tahoe. And Lahontan National Fish Hatchery has the original population in a captive broodstock. And today we're actually spawning males and uh, female captive brood. Spawning refers to the act of capturing eggs and sperm followed by external fertilization. The offspring is called a brood. We're actually spawning a female uh, LCT, a Pilot Peak strain LCT. That's what's happening here? Right, she's been sedated so that she's calm. How old is this fish? This is a three-year-old female. And how many eggs is she giving us right now? Uh, the three-year-olds are a little bit younger, but uh, they give about 1,000 eggs per female. Maybe up to 1,400 eggs this year with the four or five-year-olds. Now, what do you do with the eggs? Well, so we have an egg uh, bag that's identified with that female, and um, it's been identified through Corrine's uh, spawning matrix previously, and Derek here has milt from a, an appropriate male, a male that has been pre-selected that maximizes the genetic diversity of this future uh, cross of fish. So right here we're watching the eggs being fertilized. Fertilized, that's correct. These will be about a thousand to twelve hundred Pilot Peak LCT in about a month. That is exciting. And so the fertilization process we have to let them sit and fertilize for about two minutes but all the data is being tracked on this bag through the process, through this stage, through incubation in the tank room. Well, show me that. Show me the other production. stations, will you? Absolutely. The fertilized eggs need to sit in the bag for about two minutes before they can be transferred to an incubator next door. Okay, so step number one, they get properly fertilized. Step number two happens in this building. What is it? That's correct. The fertilized eggs get brought over into the incubation room where those fertilized eggs take about a month to turn into fish. That's what's happening here? That's what's happening here. This right here, these are the trays of the fertilized eggs? That's correct, for the future brood. So we put the fertilized eggs in here initially, and this is where they spend about a month to incubate. These are disinfected, shocked, and put to bed, and they get a month to sit in there and mature. And once they become mature, basically turn into small fish, these are our future brood that we will, once they get to be a three-year-old, they'll go into the captive brood program. And this is all fish that stay on station. These, however, are production fish. So once they turn into uh, fish, uh, they stay in these tanks until they're big enough to go to the next step, which is outside in the raceway. A raceway is an aquaculture device that uses continuously running water to raise fish. So once the fish have spent anywhere up to a year in the raceways where they can grow out, we load them up into our hatchery truck and we take them out to Pyramid to stock, which is what we're doing today. So these guys are going from here to there, straight to Pyramid Lake. Straight to Pyramid Lake today. Hey guys, you made it, you're free, they did it. That's exciting. I wanna do my part, can I help out? Absolutely, get in line, we can use all the hands we can. I'm going to work, I'm gonna help out. Hey guys, you're going home. You're going home. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Once the fish are loaded up and ready to go, we all take a quick ride to Pyramid Lake. I don't know about you guys, but this is an exciting moment for me. Let's go check on the fish. Hatchery workers quickly hook up hoses for the transfer. So, Lisa, exactly how does this work with the tube? 
So they're connecting the tube to the truck and basically that is the source for water and fish. And so Dan up top, he pulls the, the valve, which releases both fish and water out of one tank. And you work your way from the back tank towards the front so that you can make sure you flush out all of the fish that may be hanging out in the tube. Hey Dan, how you doing buddy? Good. Good. So you're telling me that the fish are coming from that tank through the tube and into the lake? Mm -hmm. With the water, that's correct. So Lisa, we'll actually be able to see them coming out? You will. You will be able to see bubbles and fish coming out of the tube. Happy fish. Happy fish. They're free. Ooh. Ooh. There they go. That's right. Look at them. Look at them. Starting their new life in the wild. How many will we be releasing today? About 8,000 in the truck today. Years of dedication and an essential partnership with the Paiute tribe continues to bring the Lahontan cutthroat trout back home. It's amazing, isn't it? Many years ago, everyone thought that the LCT fish was wiped off the face of the earth. And then somebody finds it in a small little space in Utah. And now today, this lake has about a million of them. Nature sure is resilient, isn't it? But it never hurts to give it a helping hand.